the reality is, Chad, people know you as child, grandchild of a politician family. Is it? Yeah, no. So, that's it. so what kind of, so could you tell me what kind of um, attitude, any kind of situations, have people ever bullied you for being, or not even bullied, but targeted you specifically for being the child of who you are? A hundred percent. I have been the outlet and the target of so many people's built up anger that I guess they couldn't realize that as a child, I really couldn't change anything. Hey, hold up, hold up. <laughs> What me do? Tell them about their mother. Q Chad's feature. Hey, me mash up this, you know. You may know us from the social house, but do you really know who we are? This Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to get a bit more inside the minds of these influencers. Yo, welcome people never did know say a yard man and I am here with a fellow social host Rumi. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Chad Lucci. So right now what we're doing, we're getting inside the social host, but as you can see we're probably not inside the social host, but get to get a bit inside the mind of our creators. Alright, let's so, do it. Alright, so Chad we are here, we're part of the social house and everything. This is potentially the first time a lot of people here in Jamaica are seeing not just myself, but you as well. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely the show has opened me up to a lot of new audiences, a lot of new fans. So big up the show <laughs> and big up Uno. Yeah, for real. So, you know, said, you know, we're a part of Team Uptown Badness. We can't, we can't run away from the fact that, you know, where we come from. Yo, yeah. facts. We literally were in the supermarket today, and instead of somebody hailing us as Ethan and Chad, them say, Yo, Uptown Badness. And guess what? We have to say, Yo. Yo. <laughs> I don't know about to give it a name. We end up choose on the name, and we say, All right, let's roll with it. So, we both live in the States. What is like? I mean, I know what it's like, but what is like for you? being somebody who spends so much time in the states and in jamaica at the same time making this content wherever you are mm. well making the content anywhere i am is non-negotiable if i'm on the moon we need a vlog camera we need a battery but really and truly there's so much different sides to creating content here at home in jamaica versus abroad and one of those main things to me would be collaboration which really is just not something you see very often in America. Mm -hmm. America is not as much of a each one help one. Mm -hmm. You get me? It's everybody, oh, what you have, what you can do for me type vibe. So, yeah. I mean, I heard you talk about, you know, a stalker story before. Yeah. What kind of one? What's the craziest kind of fun interaction that you've had in Jamaica? And compare it to craziest fun interaction you've had in the States. You know, I don't think I've had any crazy fun interactions here in Jamaica. Normally they're chill, they're nice, they say hey, I say hey, you want a picture, let's get a picture. Yeah, I've never had any bad experiences with any Jamaicans. But when I was in America, I did have somebody pull up to my house, Sunday morning, like I didn't go cook Sunday, you know. And when I opened the door, because my sister automatically just thought it was one of my friends, I was like, yeah, I have no friend that ride a big ass bike in foreign. Yeah. So when I went outside expecting to tell this person they got the wrong address, they were like, oh my gosh. I knew it was here. And I was like, hold on. Who the f is this? <laughs> I was like, who are you? And then he just proceeded to go on about how he found out that this was my house and wanted a picture. And this was a very big man. And I, Wait, I was, how him find out this is your house? I did a video where I was doing the one chip challenge. And I guess part of my house was in the cut part. And he said that he just found it. And I was like, bro, that's the weirdest thing you could have ever done in your life. And he still wanted the picture and he was almost upset at me that I didn't want to give him the picture. I was like, man, you need to go. Don't ever come back here. This is the weirdest thing you've ever done in your life. And yeah, no, super weird interaction. All right, so we see the fun interaction, you know, in Jamaica versus the States. What about the criticism? How about the comment section? Like, I know so some people in Jamaica would probably tease you a little bit because of how you may sound, what your pot was sound like. How does that affect you in any way? No, and to be honest, I really don't get that much criticism. I'm one of the creators that create, you get me? So I feel like in this whole creative space, you can really, even if you're not niche down to a topic, there's two ways you can niche yourself. As a personality creator or idea-based creator. And I'm a little bit of both. So it's hard to, in a way, judge or comment on my personality when there's so much more to the video. You could watch one of my videos throughout its entirety and really don't like me. 
but you can't deny the fact that it had some form of entertainment and it had the potential to make you watch from start to the end. So I don't really get much criticism. I feel like when I first started out, I used to get a lot more criticism, but everybody's willing to criticize something when they don't know if it's working or not. Absolutely. So I really didn't get much criticism. Well, I don't get much criticism nowadays. They just know it's working and they know you can say something, but I'm not going to stop. And if your comment is too rude and it's on my page, I'm just going to delete it. It's literally my page. So I just going to restrict you. So now you'll be there commenting. <laughs> you'll comment all day long and not even know you're the only one seeing your comments. It's just you and me. Facts. <laughs> but yeah. You know, I talk a lot about mental health, you know, and things like that. Just kind of want to peel it back a bit. The reality is, Chad, people know you as child and grandchild of a politician family. Is it? <laughs> yeah, no. So, that's it. so what kind of, so could you tell me what kind of um, attitude, any kind of situations, have people ever bullied you for being, or not even bullied, but targeted you specifically for being the child of who you are? A hundred percent. I have been the outlet and the target of so many people's built up anger that I guess they couldn't realize that as a child, I really couldn't change anything. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. People were targeting you because of this as a child. Oh, 100%. I don't, funny enough. How, how young we're talking? I'm talking, when I moved to Jamaica, I was nine. Yeah. And I lived here since I was nine to when I was 18. That's when I went back to college, or 17. But, yeah, a good, uh, I'd say... It really didn't stop until you can be identified as your own person. When you're your own person, you make your own decisions. You have your own identity in a way, but until you build up your identity, my kids will always be Chad's kids. Until them say, yo, me a so-and-so now. And then that's when you really start to be like, oh, me not like this, my father might like this, me not do that. And you really start to build up your own personality. But even down to high school days, I definitely was a target to a lot of my teachers built up anger. I remember the first set of teacher strikes that happened at my school and I had teachers that really disliked me and I really couldn't seem to figure out why but it was something that had nothing to do with me and nothing I could change. I couldn't change a teacher's pay, I had no say in a parliamentary building or much less any of my family's parliamentary discussions or meetings. I wasn't even, they knew more about it than I did at the time. I was just. This is just my family, you get me? Some people's family are filled with doctors, some people's family are filled with lawyers. Mine was just filled with politicians, and that's just how it was. Pause. Yeah, pardon me as I interrupt this program, right? That's so, why, yeah, me just want to remind you know, to go to the social host, ja.com. Vote for fan favorites. Vote for me. Team Yadman. All right, back to the video. So, did you feel like you had to find some kind of camaraderie with people, other children, other people your age in similar situations? Can you know, say some people, you know, the classism in Jamaica works. Yeah. For some people who are unable to, you know, find peace outside of classism, they group up with people with, you know, in, with similar groups and upbringings and things like that so i want to know like did you have to find friends or like a, a a support system or support base with people similar to you or were you somebody who is a boy anybody rock with me rock with me yeah man well i'll say that i definitely had a mixture of both yeah. And initially when I went to JC, my first two years I wasn't a fan of it. And it wasn't something that was wrong with the school, but I definitely felt like an outsider. I was just that rich kid or Pernod Charles' grandson or whatever they really wanted to call me instead of just identifying me like, yo, that's just Chad, you get me? So originally I definitely did want to leave my school. And it was just because I was like, yo, I'm damned if you do, damned if you don't. I literally can't do anything about this. So it's one of those things where if a regular child misbehaved in class, they were just acting up. Yeah. But if I did something, I threw my thing, my bread butter to side, I feel like me as so-and-so, so I can go on. So, so a, lot of, yeah. a lot of stuff were taken out of proportion of me just being a child making my own mistakes. And a lot of times I was automatically assumed to should have known better than to act up or to be talkative in class or do anything. And if I wasn't, it was naturally because I felt like I was entitled, not just misbehaving. And funny enough, I was a very mischievous child, but it wasn't because of who I was or who I, what I thought I could get away with. To be honest, if I wasn't, I would have done more. <laughs> I've always just been a little troublemaker. Yeah. If you know me, I love to ramp, I love to make joke, 
I can sit quiet. And it's just who I am. It literally has nothing to do with the outer aspects. Yeah. Chad. Respect you for the interview, bro. I feel like Duh. people them, eh? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I what? feel like, I feel like the people them, I feel like the people them got a, a, a bit of a closer glimpse into. You guys got a little closer glimpse. You know, no more question. Interview shot. I mean, shot, little, quick little interview. I got, I got try to do this with, you know, the other people them in the house. The... But, you know, whatever else you want to share. I mean, is there anything else that you want to tell the people them, like a lesson that you feel like that you've learned out of your life that you'd want to, you know, Ooh. tell the people them? Kind of thing. A lesson that I've learned. For me personally, let me tell you. I was a youth who grew up on Beverly Hills. I was in a situation where I am cash poor, property rich. People say house and say, a lot of money, but they don't know my reality. You get me? I, say, I was one of them, those people who I'm afraid for t- make people know where I live and all of my friend friend them know where I live. Because I know that some people just them is like them just don't get it you get me and say like yo you have to know how to treat me as a person or are you going to treat me differently simply because of who i am what i have or who my family are kind of thing so you have any kind of no i definitely that point that you made i definitely get it and funny enough it's so funny because a lot of times people will comment that oh I just be your uptown people you're power with i be your hype people you're power with i be your rich people you're power with and funny enough a lot of times you will realize a celebrity will date a celebrity and that's not to say that i'm better than anybody or but it's just the fact that you get it you get me i used to have friends that i used to thought were close friends when i was younger but they'd come to my house and steal my toys you get me or i'd have i'd have friends that would come over and their parents would see our house and they just leave their kid two three days you get me type stuff oh no man i'm good you get me so the more i grew up the more I realized, I was like, hmm, the more people I'm around that don't see me as some form of undiscussed competition, in a way, or they're not feeling like I'm better than them, because the second you walk into a situation and you feel like I'm better than you, we've already gone wrong. And it's not me, it's you. Mm -hmm. It's you, because if I felt like I was better than you, and I felt like I was in a position to say that, I would have said it. (laughs) It's you, though. And that's, right. a, that's the scary part. It really is a lot of times people, and even outside of just my personal life, even in the content creator space, it's so hard sometimes for people to remember, hey, I'm literally a regular human. What you say can hurt. Absolutely. How, like, this is my work. Yes. And everybody can see what I'm doing at work, how I'm doing at work, how often I do my job, how well I do my job based on your opinion. So your opinion is now what becomes my criteria for doing a good job or not doing a good job. So if I sit here and do a backflip, and you title this Chad Lucci does a backflip mid-interview yeah. and does a million views, yeah. they don't want to see me cook. They want to see me do backflips. Right. You're the backflip kid. <laughs> you get me? So it really is just one of those things where it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. And my biggest tip would be live your life and don't live it for nobody. And I know it sounds crazy and it sounds way simpler than it seems. Live your life, don't leave it for nobody. Do your thing, your time will come, for sure. Your time will come and everything will make sense soon. Everything that's brought you down, everything that's stood in your way, you'll realize why you had to do all those stuff. And in the moment, it is the most difficult thing to understand because presently, life is crumbling around you, but you don't even realize the pathway it's created. So just stay focused. If you want to draw, be the best draw ever, draw artist. I don't know what them say. If you want to be a garbage collector, be the best garbage collector. That's what my grandpa always used to tell me. You want to be a street sweeper, be the best street sweeper there is. And just stick to what you love because eventually somebody will understand it. And it's not based on your time. That's one of the biggest things I had to learn. It's never going to be based on your time or what you feel or when you're ready. Because so many stuff that God has blessed me with this year, I wasn't ready for it when I was upset when I didn't have them. I wasn't ready for so much of it and even now staying at the position where I'm at now in my career as a content creator I wouldn't have been ready to do all of that six months in I wouldn't have been able to take the pressure I wouldn't have been able to take the criticism there's so much shots to the chin you take as a content creator just because it's someone sitting there on their phone and they're just oh I had a bad day. So, Ethan, your hair look like shit today. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, let me spread the hate. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. So, another tip I would give is just be kind. Because yeah. you really don't know who is on their last straw. You don't know who is feeling what type of way. And you really don't know 
how deeply your words can affect someone. Right. Just keep it in your group chat. Really. Chat. Respect you, know, bro. Think of yourself, Brody. All right. So we're there inside the social house. Is it me? I say, who should I interview next? Who do you think? Hmm. Um. Well, forgive me to address the elephant in the room because people say beefing at the house okay. between me and you. <laughs>